Hi everyone, welcome back to day two of Art Camp. It's nice to see you again. On the agenda for today, we have Color Theory Mod and Pizza Bookmark. So let's get started with the Color Theory Mod. Here is my sample. You can see we have a watercolor background, that's a color wheel, and then a moth in the foreground. Let's get out our materials. First, you will need the three watercolors. Your glue dots. The purple acrylic paint. Tacky glue. Your paint palette. Two paint brushes. And from your folder, you will need the big piece of watercolor paper and the half sheet. From home, you will need a cup of water and paper towels, a pencil, scissors, and some markers. First, we're just going to be using the big sheet of watercolor paper and our pencil so we can set everything else to the side. Now, you can see on this one that the background is divided into 12, so we're going to start by doing that lightly in pencil. And I'm not the type of person who uses a ruler for this kind of stuff. I don't necessarily think that rulers belong in art unless you're trying to do something super duper mathematical or something. So I'm just going to wing it. Draw one, roughly dividing your paper in half. Turn it this way. Divide it in half again, roughly. And then each of these four sections needs to be divided into three. So what I like to do is go roughly two thirds of the way um, between the center line and the edge of the paper. And I'll make a line there. And I'll do the same thing down here. And then I'll just connect those two points, making sure that I go through the center where the other lines cross. And then I'll do the same thing over here. So the line, and then I'll repeat the same thing for the other two sections. So I have my 12 sections. I did them a little bit too dark, but I wanted to make sure that you guys could see them. So now I'm going to go back through and erase them. But I will still leave them light enough so that I can tell where the sections are. Okay, now that I have my 12 sections and my pencils erased, it's time to get out our watercolors. So we're going to take our paint palette. Each section will get a different color, and right now we're going to start with our primary colors. So let's get out our red. Take your small round brush, get it a little bit wet, and then you just want to take a little bit of the red paint and put it in one of the paint wells in your palette. Now, the reason you only have a tiny, tiny amount of each watercolor is because the pigment is so concentrated that you don't need a ton of paint because we will be adding so much water to it. So you can see, I just took that very small amount, put it in here. Now I'm gonna take my clean brush and get some water and just drop some water in there. And then I'll take my red brush again and mix it up. And that is about the consistency I want. And then you're just going to choose whatever section you want to start. 
Right now, it doesn't matter which one you choose, but each color after this will have to follow the red. I am going to choose this one in the corner right here. And with watercolor, I like to start by just making my little barrier so that my paint doesn't flow into the other sections. And then make sure you keep grabbing more paint. And I even like to take some water and just put it over here, mix it around a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to wash out my brush. And our next primary color is yellow. So again, I'm just going to take my brush and take a little bit of the paint, put it in one of the paint wells, and then with my clean brush, drop some water. it up. And we want our yellow section to be three sections away from the red section. So one, two, three, this one is going to be my yellow. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the red, make my little outline first just so I know where I'm painting and then fill in with paint and also probably some water. Okay. Our last primary color is blue. So we are going to do the same thing with the blue again. It should be three away from the red and also three away from the yellow. So just a little bit on my brush. The blue one you might have to mix up a little bit. Sometimes it has a tendency to separate. So I'm just gonna mix it up and then take whatever's on my brush, put it in a paint well, and get some water. Now I'm just going to paint this section blue. So here you can see that I accidentally just splattered a little bit of extra watercolor on a part that I want to keep white. So I'm going to show you what to do if you accidentally do that. You're going to need a clean brush and a piece of paper towel. So you're going to take some water and you want to get the paint wet. And you want to dab at it, but you don't want to like rub it into the paper. So just dab at it to kind of lift up the color and then take your paper towel and press straight down and pull straight back up, straight down, straight back up. And there you go. You can't even really tell. There's another little dot over here. So I'm going to do the same thing. And there we go. Usually if you ever run into an issue in an art project, there's some way to fix it. And if you run into a stumbling block, don't be scared to email me and we can even set up a Google Meet or a Zoom meeting. So I'm gonna finish painting the section blue now.
Now that we have finished our primary sections, it's time to move on to our secondary colors. So those are going to be the ones that are one section away from the primary one. So this one, this one, and this one. And they're going to be orange, green, and purple. So first we're going to start with our orange. I am going to take actually some of the red from here. Wash out my brush super well. And then take yellow. You'll probably need more yellow than red. And just mix. And now on the other sides of orange are going to be red, orange, and yellow, orange. So you want to make sure that your orange is a really, really nice, even mixture of the two. You don't want it to be too yellow and you don't want it to be too red, otherwise it will blend in with the ones around it. So I would say that this is a pretty good orange color. So I am going to take this and use the same technique to fill in this section. Actually, I just forgot to mix water into my paint. So I'm going to do that first and then fill in the section. For the paint that's already on the paper that I forgot to mix with water, I'm actually just going to get a brush full of water and kind of try to re-wet the paint. There we go. It's working pretty well. Okay, now it's time for green. I'm going to take some of my blue. Wash out my brush super well. And then take some of the yellow. Again, since the yellow is a lighter color, you might need a little bit more yellow paint than blue paint, but the mixture should look like an even mix between the two. So you can see actually my green has a little bit too much yellow in it. So I'm going to take a little more blue and mix it in. That looks better to me. So then I'll take some water, should probably be using my clean brush. There we go. Mix. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint this section green. Okay, now it's time for our last secondary color, which is purple. Now, scientifically, purple is the hardest color to mix because of the red and blue pigments inside of it. And I tried using our red and blue to make purple and it turned out brown every time. So I thought I might show you a little trick of how sometimes I can use acrylic and make it look like watercolor. 
This is nice for when you want to do a watercolor painting, but you're missing just one color or something. It's not necessarily great to do a whole painting like this, but I definitely like to use this technique sometimes. So I'm going to take a little bit of this purple acrylic, put it in this paint well. It's not going to work the same way as our watercolors. It will be, it will feel a lot different. You'll know what I mean when you do it. So there's my purple, and then I'm gonna take some water and put it in there, just like how we did with our watercolors. Right. Then I'm going to mix that up. And we actually are going to need more of this than we have needed to fill in any of the other sections. So I am going to put more paint in and more water just so I have enough to use. go. So now I'm going to take this and start painting this section. You can see when it goes on it's a lot streakier than the watercolor and it also doesn't like to move around on the paper the same that watercolor does. So it's definitely important to keep grabbing water as you're painting this to make it blend in with the other ones. Otherwise it will be too streaky. But the water definitely helps it blend more similar to watercolor. Makes sense. <laughs> okay, this is after one layer of the purple. So in a little bit, I'm going to go back in and do another layer, but I'm going to let it dry for now. Now it's time to move on to our tertiary colors. We did primary, secondary, and now tertiary. So those are the ones that go in between all these colors. Those are going to be red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, blue violet, and red violet. You can see that a tertiary color is actually just a mix of a primary color and a secondary color, and the primary color always goes first. So, for instance, red orange. We are going to start with that one. I'm going to take my brush and take some of my orange, put it in here, and then take some of my red. And now, looking at this paint palette, we can see the colors that we've already used, and we're aiming for a color in between this red and this orange. Right now, mine is a little bit too much towards the red, so I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and try to make it closer to my goal color. And I actually think that that did it. So I'm going to add a little bit more water to this and then carefully paint the section in between the red and the orange. I'm going to mix a little bit more red orange because this is a little bit thinner than I would like it to be and I ran out of paint. So I'm going to do that now. Take some red, some orange, and a little more red. There we go. 
And then I just want the color to be a little darker, so I'm going to do another layer right on top of the wet one. With the acrylic, we want to wait in between layers because it doesn't blend as well as the watercolor. There we go, that's better. Now it's time for yellow orange. So this paint palette isn't big enough for us to have one color per thing. So I'm actually going to reuse the one that I already put the orange in and just add some yellow to it. And that's a, a little bit too much orange, so I'm going to add a tiny bit more yellow. And then I'll add some water. And then fill in the section between yellow and orange. Even just putting down those two tertiary colors, you can really see the color wheel start to begin forming. Next, we're going to do yellow green. So this is the last color where we're going to be using yellow. So I'm going to take some of my green and just put it into the yellow that we already used. There we go. Then I'll add just a little bit more water. And now I'm going to paint the section in between yellow and green. I got a little bit of green in my yellow, so I'm gonna do that same trick that I did earlier. Just get it wet and then Dab straight down, oop, straight up. There we go. And I'll finish painting this section. Okay, now it's time for blue-green. I'm going to use this section and take some of my green. Then I'm going to take some of my blue for my container. Mix those. And I still think it could use a little bit more blue. I'm going to add some of that. Okay, to me that looks like a good blue-green. So I'm going to add a little more water to it. And then paint the section. And actually, as I'm painting, I'm realizing I want a little more blue in it. So I'm just going to add some blue to the paint I was already using. I'm going to take some water and wet down the paint that I put down already and then just start using this paint now. 
and they should just blend together pretty well. Now it's time for blue violet. So I'm going to take some of the purple acrylic and actually just mix it into the blue that I already have. That's still a little too much blue for me, so I'm gonna take more of just the straight acrylic. Mix it in there. Now, that looks pretty good to me, but I do need some more water in there. Okay, and then we are just going to do the section between blue and purple. And you can see that this one is kind of thin and streaky like our purple one was, so we're gonna have to do two layers. And we're going to have to let them dry in between. Okay, our last color is red violet. So I'm going to take some of my red, put it here. And then some of the purple acrylic. Mix. And now the red violet does end up looking a little bit brown, kind of like the troubles that I was having mixing the red and the blue. But it's not too much that you still can't tell that it's red violet. So mine needs a little bit more purple. I'm gonna take some purple. And that looks pretty good to me. So I am going to put some more water in there. then paint the section. Okay, this red violet worked out really well, but you can kind of see here in my first one what I mean about it looking a little bit brown. So I'm going to go back in and add a second layer to my purple. Then I'm going to go back in with the blue violet and do the same thing. Okay. 
Okay, then we are done with the color wheel part of this project. So I'm going to let that dry and put away my painting supplies. And I will come back in a little bit to teach you about some color schemes. Okay, now it's time to learn about some color theory. We've already been using a couple color theory terms today, so I am just going to give a little refresher. First, we have our primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. Then our secondary, orange, green, and purple. And then our tertiary, which is a primary color followed by a secondary. We also talked about how there are 12 sections in this color wheel. And this is actually called a 12 point scale. And using this 12 point scale, you can create different color schemes, which is a tool that artists use to choose the colors for their artwork. So today we are going to be learning about two different color schemes. The first one is called analogous, and it's spelled A-N-A-L-O-G-O-U-S. So an analogous color scheme is made up of three colors, and they are three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So an example of this would be yellow, green, green, and blue, green. And you can see they all have one color in common, which is green. If you take these, there is orange, yellow, orange, and yellow. And all three of these colors have yellow in them. You can really do it with any of them on here. Blue, violet, violet, red, violet, they all have violet. I think it's pretty simple to understand. So our next one is complementary, which is a little bit trickier, but not too difficult. So complementary colors are colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel. So the most famous example of this is probably red and green. And what do we know those colors from? Christmas, right? Another example is blue and orange, like the Chicago Bears. And then there are some wackier ones like red, violet, and yellow, green, or blue, violet, and yellow, orange, anything like that. So I want you to remember those color schemes because they're gonna be coming back up later. Right now, we're gonna set this aside and get out our half sheet. You also are going to need your pencil right now. We are going to be drawing a moth to put on our background and we're going to be using those color schemes to figure out the colors of its wings. Right now though, we're just going to focus on drawing the moth. So we're going to start with an oval. From that oval, a little kind of like round triangle coming off of it. And then another one coming off of that to create the moth's body. Next, we're gonna start up here and make two little lines so we can tell where our wings are coming out of. Taking those lines, I'm just gonna go and make a curvy line up there. And I'm gonna to try to copy the same thing on the other side. There we go. Then I'm going to go about where these two parts of the moth's body meet and put another little line. And this curves down. And then we can kind of go up here and connect them. And when you connect them, you can kind of fix the shapes that you made. Like, see, I don't actually want mine to go over there. So I just erase it. I'm gonna do the same thing down and then I'll start from the top and go down and there we go now it's time for the bottom wings so I'm gonna make two little marks where I want them to come out from under the top ones and I'm also going to make two marks down here and then we're just gonna connect them with a the curve we'll do the same thing on the other side And there we go. So we're gonna need some designs on our moth's wings. We're gonna start by making a line on the outside of this one. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then we're also gonna do a very similar thing on the bottom. We're gonna make a line 
join it with the other ones. And there you go. Now, each section also has some dots. So in these big ones, we're going to make one big dot up here and a small one down here. And over here, one big one, one small one. And then in these ones, there is a small one in each. And then there are also some stripes on the inside of their wings. So in these big sections, there are going to be three stripes. One, two, three. In the bottom sections, there are only two stripes. So I like to take this third stripe, make it into the first one for the bottom, and then do another little one outside of it. Just like that. And then for the antenna, I like my moths to have furry antenna. So I make kind of like a leaf shape. And there we go. Now it's time to color him in. So we are going to be using our different color schemes to color the wings, like I already said. I want you to use analogous color schemes on the top two wings and complementary color schemes on the bottom two wings. Okay. It's nice to have your color wheel handy to kind of pick out the color schemes, and I want for each wing to have a different one. No two are going to be the same. So now it's time for your markers. And I think I'm going to make my two complementary wings first. So I am going to do this left one orange and blue. And I'm going to start by making the main part of the wing orange. Okay, now it's time for my blue. And also you can kind of see that the colors I'm using don't exactly match my color wheel because these are watercolors and these are a completely different brand of markers and that is 100% okay. As long as you get the idea across. And I'm not erasing my pencil because we're just going to go back in and outline it with black so our black marker will cover up our pencil marks. Okay, for my other complementary one, I think I'm going to do yellow and purple. I'll take my yellow and my purple and I'm going to make the main part of the wing yellow. Now it's time to move on to my analogous wings. So for this one over here, I am going to do red, red, violet, and purple. I'm going to make the main part of the wing red and then go in and do the different details in violet and red, violet. Also, I haven't said this yet, but violet and purple can really be used interchangeably. I'm sure you already know that. I just wanted to make it clear. Okay, now I'm going to choose one color to make the dots. And I'm going to choose my red violet. So I'm going to fill those in. 
and then whatever color you fill in your dots with is also going to be the middle stripe over here. So there's that. And then I'm going to use my violet to fill in everything else. Okay, for my last analogous wing, I am going to be doing yellow green, green, and blue green. I want the main part of my wing to be yellow green, so I'm going to do that first. Next, I'm going to make the dots green. And then the middle stripe. Now it's time for my blue green. Now I like for the body of my moth to be rainbow stripes, but you can really do whatever pattern or color scheme you want. I'm going to start with red and just do rainbow stripes all the way down. Okay, now it is time to do the outline. So find your best black marker, and we're gonna start by filling in this bottom part of the body. I'm also gonna fill in the head. I like to leave a little kind of swoosh of white just as like a little highlight on the moth's head and then outline this part and I like to outline my stripes too there we go for the antenna I outline the outside Make a line down the middle and then just do lots of diagonal lines connecting to that middle one. There you go. And now it's time for our wings. Outline the outside of them first. I like to make the bottom and the outside of my wing have a little bit thicker line than the top. I feel like it gives it a little bit of dimension. And then like this bottom one, I make super thick. And make it a little bit thinner up here. Same thing on the other side. Okay, now it's time to outline the details on the wings. I like to use a thinner line than I've been using for the rest of it, kind of like how I use a thinner line to separate my stripes. And then on these outer stripes of color, I like to take my black and just do some lines like this. So 
So I'll outline the bottom one. Do the same with those stripes. Do the same thing on the other side. Now it's time to cut out our mom. So we're gonna take our scissors and just cut around this outside outline. You're gonna to have to be careful around the antenna because you don't wanna make it too thin that they fall off. Okay, now that I have my mom cut out, there are a couple spots in the outline that I'm going to fix. Like around the antenna, I made it a little bit thicker so that they wouldn't fall off. And then there's a little spot over here that got a little messed up. Then it's time for us to get back out our color wheel. So we're going to lay this down in front of us, whichever way you want it to be facing for your final product. We're going to take our moth, set it in the middle, make sure everything looks okay, everything looks how you want it to. Then we're going to flip our moth over and take out our glue dots. So we're going to take one, stick it on the upper corner of the big wing. it off. Gonna take the next glue dot, stick the glue dot down, press it, and then peel off the paper. There we go. Take the next glue dot on this bottom wing. And then same thing on the other one. And then once we're done with our glue dots, we're gonna wrap back up what we have left and put them in here because we're gonna need them later in the week for when we make magnet sets. But I'm just gonna set that aside. And then we're gonna take our tacky glue and do the parts where we didn't put glue dots. Not all of them, just the main parts. So, actually first you're going to have to cut off the end of your tacky glue to make a little hole and then you can start using it. So I am just going to put one dot on my moth's head and then two really small dots on the antenna just so they have something to stick down to. And then I'm also going to put one dot at the bottom and that's it. So we can also put our glue back in our box and use it later today. So carefully flip your moth, kind of try to center it, make sure it's where you want it, and then place it down. I'm going to press where my glue dots are, and then I'm going to press where my tacky glue is. You don't want to press too hard so that the glue comes gushing out. It kind of did, but it's, it's okay if it does a little bit because it will dry clear, but too much and it might ruin the look of our art. So I'm actually going to wipe this a little bit. I'm going to keep holding them down lightly. Then it's 
it's important for an artist to sign their artwork. So I want everyone to take a skinny black marker or a black pen or something like that. And I want you to sign your art. So I'm going to sign mine underneath the wing down here, but you can do it wherever you want to. And there we go. Once your artwork is signed, it will just need to dry and then you're finished. I can't wait to see everyone's pictures. I think you guys are going to do awesome with the color schemes and I can't wait to see what you make. I will see you later today for pizza bookmarks. Bye.